All right, together we get on the radio. I've been telling you guys I spent a lot of time alone, a lot. More lately, quiet time alone. Does that mean I don't party? Oh, sure, I party. Ask uh, ask people at some of the uh, biggest watering holes in town. Sure, I do. I was uh, at hockey on Saturday. I drink martinis at Lola's. I get around. You know I do. But because I'm not in a relationship, because I am not in a marriage, there are those times in between. Some of that time is spent waiting in line at the dry cleaner. Some of that time is spent going to the supermarket. And some of it is spent paying bills. And then there's other time where you might generously call it downtime. I have been spending more and more time thinking. It uh, became apparent to me that to do a show like this, you've got to have stuff to say. And in order to have stuff to say, it helps to have time to think about stuff. How many people go day in and day out without ever taking some time out to just think? I don't mean on the toilet. I mean, you know, someplace comfortable, quiet, inviting, someplace where... You know, decades ago, men had a study or a den to go to. By the way, my new place, I'm putting in a study. Not that I'll be studying anything, but uh, I'm putting in a study where I will sit and sip uh, scotch and uh, maybe smoke a cigar and look out at the most amazing view in the world. Spending time thinking is very important to me. And here's one of the things I've thought about recently. You know, over the years, ever since I left home at 16 years old, I've gone through a complete evolution, as many of you are, are experiencing now, uh, having become listeners to this show. I'm just a few steps ahead of you, and then I've been reporting my progress to you, and some of you have followed me along the way. You know, I never call myself a perfect person. I always say that I'm a work in progress. I have made mistakes. I continue to make mistakes. But I generally learn from them, and I generally try to help you learn from them. And in giving long, deep thought to my experiences in having relationships, one thing became apparent to me, and that is this. I've told many of you that I have a zero-tolerance policy on chick crap. Zero. The zero means zero nagging, zero complaining, I do not want to be critiqued, criticized, I don't want to be uh, told what chores to do around the house, I don't want to be told what colors to wear, or to stop wearing my shades, or to stop watching sports, or to stop watching hockey, or to stop going to the Hollywood Bowl to see jazz every Wednesday all summer long, or whatever it is I like, I won't tolerate critiquing or criticism any longer. Now, I'd be lying to you if I pretended that I have always had that attitude. Quite the contrary. At one time... I allowed myself to be pushed and prodded and shoved by various women. My radio career was delayed a good five years by two particular relationships I was in where I was so into getting laid regularly. And this is why I know what you boys are doing when you call in and tell me what you're up to. I was so into getting laid. I was getting it so good and so often and, and getting exactly what I needed in the sack. I actually considered just blowing my career off, or I considered delaying it. In fact, I did delay it. 
in some cases, I actually bought jackets and work shirts and ties and and took day jobs where I came in and I reported to various superiors. I knew where the stationary supply closet was in the office. I knew to talk to the receptionist if I needed paper clips or staples. And I was willing to just have a job, just a J-O-B job, because when I came home, I was going to get a different kind of job. Like every kind of job you could name, if it ended in job, I was getting it. <laughs> but part of that is based on the following fact, and that is that most of us, we are younger. The younger we get started, the, the more true this is. We don't have gain. We frequently get corralled into believing that every woman we meet who's halfway decent may be the best last hope we will ever have of getting laid. So we lay down for them. So we tolerate their stamping their feet and making demands and telling us they want more for Valentine's Day and they want more for their birthday and telling us that they want a June wedding and telling us they want a carrot and a half solitaire diamond ring and they want different kinds of cars and they want to wear certain kinds of clothing and have certain kinds of accessories. And and they want to live on the same street where their parents live, and they want us to move there with them, and they want us to move to their parents' basement. We tolerate this stuff because we think when we are 19 or 21, we think the chicks we are with are the best we're ever going to do. And looking back on my life, I was the same way at that age. And the reason I was was because nobody was there to show me the future. My dad was not rich and successful. My mom was a housewife. We didn't have any friends of the family who were successful in business. I mean, when I was 19, it appeared to me that, you know, you get a job, you get the most beautiful woman you can who will have sex with you on a regular basis, and then that's pretty much as far as you're going to go. I could not see being a multimillionaire when I was 19. Oh, yes, I wanted to get into radio. But, my God, if I, I, I thought to myself, what would success be making $50,000 a year and being able to come in and uh, play records every night? Oh, God, that would be great, and then my life would be set. That's what I thought. So I thought if I had the right girlfriend and... I could get her behind the plan. She would, uh, you know, support me as I tried to uh, become successful. And then as time went on, I found out the real truth that women do not want to be there while you're working your way up the ladder. And the reason they don't want to be there while you're working your way up the ladder is because they are afraid of a real truth. And that is that when you become more financially successful, when you get better at your career, when you get promoted at your job, Suddenly, your options open up. Suddenly, you can get younger, hotter, more compliant chicks who nag less than what you have now. And women know this more than we do. You know, women monitor our potential all the time. They monitor our education. They monitor our abilities. They monitor whether we are living up to our uh, our potential. You've heard women tell you that. You could be doing more, you could be doing better, you could work a little harder. But at the same time, they don't want you to become much more successful, because if you do, you might leave them for somebody else. And they don't want that. Essentially, they'd like you to work harder, and when you make more money, spend it at Ikea, or spend it at Ethan Allen, or spend it at Best Buy, not on big screen TVs, by the way, but, uh, you know, nice cell phones or, uh, you know, cute little speakers that go on the bookends uh, of your Ikea bookshelves or whatever. That's what they want. Work harder so you can spend more on them so that you are constantly mired in the quicksand and you can never get away and get somebody hotter, younger, better. It took a long time for me to finally understand how things work. And the way things work 
is this. You at 19, 20, and 21 cannot see the future. You cannot see what's available to you. You cannot see how successful you can become. You can't see it. And the result of not being able to see that is that you settle for whatever you get. The girl next door. The girl down the block. The girl your mom recommended to you. The arranged marriage. The first girl who talked to you. The first girl who smiled at you. The first girl who spread her legs for you. Yeah, because you can't see how valuable you're going to be in the future. I realize that my zero-tolerance policy for the crap that women dish out is based on my unwavering belief that if this vagina is not enough for me, that it doesn't get the job done, that if it starts to engage with the vagina monologues and starts talking back to me, there's going to be another vagina coming down the highway. <laughs> there's another one coming... Like, it's, there's a bus stop for vaginas, and there's going to be another one in in 10 minutes. And so because now I have money and now I'm successful, I can afford to say I'm not tolerating your crap. No one's ever called 911 on me again just because they want to get me uh, in trouble or want to embarrass me or whatever. That will never happen, ever. Happen one time, it will never happen again. No one will ever tell me that I should slow down or work less or watch less sports or drink less beer. Nobody will ever tell me again that I should wear more green. I'm done. Done. I'm done because anybody who doesn't like it, it's my way or the highway. Boys, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, look around you now. It's hard to see the future. But you have no idea how great the future will be if you put your nose to the grindstone and work a little harder. Make yourself more financially successful. Oh, yes, the girl next door will ignore you or tell you you're a loser or tell you you're a piece of crap. But that's, you know what? <laughs> That's what the over-the-hill gang is for, the chicks in their 30s who haven't found anybody yet. When you're 19, you can't find a chick. That's what the MILFs are for. That's what the Cougars are for. They keep you going until you are successful enough to get that crop of 19-year-olds that's coming in five years when you're successful. So today they're, you know, watching Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana. But I'll uh, tell you what, in five years, that Miley Cyrus with her MySpace page and her semi-naked pictures in there, that she's training the young women of the future for you, okay? And when these women are old enough and mature enough to be with a guy like you, they'll be ready and fresh and hot out of the oven for you. You uh, want to wait until that time, believe me. But uh, that is what you need to, to, to do as far as having a mindset. You need to think to yourself... I'm not that successful today, but I'm not done yet. I'm a work in progress. I am going to be more successful. And when I am more successful, there will be a crop of fresh, younger, hotter models available to me. Like I have today. You will also be able to tell the point blank. No pussyfooting around. No going down and sulking down at Hooters or the ESPN zone or wherever you go to sulk. No going out there and sulking because you're, you're pussy whipped or you're uh, a beaten dog. You will be able to look a woman in the face and say, I'm not tolerating your crap. I'm not tolerating it. You don't own half of everything I own and therefore hit the road. Hit the road. I have said hit the road. I have told women where the door is. Recommended that they use it. They have. I'm richer and happier than I've ever been, and I put up with less crap than I ever have. You know, uh, recent years, all I've known are women who like sports. Women who like the TV shows I like, the movies I like. No woman puts a gun to my head to make me go see a goddamn chick flick. 
Juno. F Juno. I haven't seen Juno. Screw it. I haven't seen Hugh Grant in a movie in 10 years. Couldn't care less. Gwyneth Paltrow, a rumor. She's married to Chris Martin from Coldplay. That's all I can tell you about Gwyneth Paltrow. But if you think I'd go to see Shakespeare in Love or any of its sequels, or, are you kidding me? I know a lot of you boys just get the crap kicked out of you. You get beaten up. You're like, you are like those beaten dogs. You really are. But it came to my attention as I sat and gave it some real thought that I came to this through an evolution. I came to this point because I realized no woman can stamp her feet and get her way with me. I can always get another woman, and that is what drives women nuts. That is how they control all of us, with the idea that they're the last woman who's ever going to talk to us. And too many of us believe it. You have no idea what's in store for you if you believe in yourself. Dump that bitch and plan for the future. That's what I did. What do you think? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Ben, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Glad to hear it, man. Hey, I just want to say, what you just said was probably the most beautifully put piece of information every guy on this planet should have heard. Brilliant. I mean, that is exactly what I should live by. And I didn't... Before, I never used to listen to any, I wouldn't think of anything to do like that. But after hearing something like that, if I had listened to you before, I would be listening now. Awesome, Tom. These are awesome. the lessons that I have learned by, by making every mistake there is. Yeah. And because my dad was in one of those happy marriages and, and really never had uh, the interest in making $100,000 a year or being phenomenally successful at anything beyond an everyday job. Um, I never got that advice as a kid, and so yeah. I never understood how it works. Right. And a lot of guys out there have no idea how to act, you know? And, they, and you were right. Every guy out there, when they get that girl, they think, this is it. If I lose her, I'm going to be on my own for the rest of my life. And I used to think like that. And it is true, like and that. it is true that uh, women become less valuable as they age, and men become more valuable. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And we just a lot of guys just don't realize that you, we have the power. Yes, and it doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter how much we weigh. It doesn't matter uh, that nothing. That how old we get. Right. The old. Absolutely. If we play it right, the older we get, the more money we make, the more success we have. The higher up we are in our companies, the more degrees we have, our stock continues to go up. Absolutely. You know, Tom, you couldn't be more right. You could not be more right. I'm 24 years old. In, my, uh, in the industry I'm working in, I've been in it two years. I've already been promoted to the top of the level of where I can be after two years because I put that hard work in, and I didn't pay for everything. You know what I mean? I did it the way, the Tom Likas way, the man way. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. And everybody listening, this is the guy to listen to. Listen to this guy. Tom, can you blow me up? Original with a uh, bong hit? I certainly can, Ben. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Dad. Hello, sir. Godson. Thank you. Man, do I got something for you. This is basically an update. This is the second time I call. Last time I called you, I was married, and uh, basically she was a total bitch. Finally, I decided, you know what, enough is enough. She wouldn't leave the house, so I told her. I basically lied to her. I told her, you know what, why don't you go up to your parents' house up in uh, Bakersfield, and uh, see how we do it by taking a week off. 
Long story short, after that week was over, I'm like, you know what? Just stay over there. I'll mail you your stuff. <laughs> so she calls me up just a couple of days ago, and she tells me um, I'm ready to move back. And I'm like, I don't think so. Right now, I'm in the process of starting my own business, and I'm paying all my debts off, which is not much, only four grand. And uh, I By the her, way, by the way, how much of those debts were incurred because you were with her? More than half. Of course. More than half. And uh, I told her, I'm like, Ah, uh, right now I'm starting to do okay on my own, and I'm starting to start my own business. And the last thing I know need is a load, an extra load on me. I think and that's fantastic. How did she react to that? Oh, uh, she was, she went crazy. And in fact, um, she took when um, she went up to Bakersfield, she took some of my stuff, which was a lot of my clothes, supposedly to wash it. And I told her, I told her, you know, I called her a, a while. What is it? Uh, two days ago, just to see if I could get my clothes back. And her her mom answered, and she started cursing me out. And I'm like, listen, lady, this is between your daughter and I. <laughs> and you know mom is probably just like her. Yeah, exactly. I have a lot, I have more respect for her dad. Her dad is a very responsible guy. He pays all his bills on time, doesn't do any of the crap that she did. And I even told her, I'm like, no wonder your, uh, your dad's first marriage didn't work out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right now... Seriously, you are a godsend. I tell everybody that uh, to listen to you because it's true what you say. It really is. In order to be successful, you got to just screw everybody else and just focus on what you're doing and every now and then get laid on the side of course. But uh, you're, seriously, you're just, a, you're just a godsend. Can you go ahead and take me out with the screaming orgasm in Mexican style, please? I certainly can, David. Here you go. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. In case you're just tuning in, I essentially gave a speech at the beginning of this hour about some recent thoughts I've had. And I realized that the reason I don't tolerate women's crap anymore is because I know any woman who gives me crap, if I dump her, there's going to be another woman where she came from. And I realize my shortcoming when I was 17, 18, 19, all the way up to 25 years old is that I always believed that whatever woman I had, I was lucky to have her. And that if I didn't uh, toe the line or do what she said or somehow compromise with her, that maybe I'd never get somebody this good again. Oh, was I wrong. 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Rose on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Um, I was just wondering, you always say that men get more valuable as they get older. Yes. And that's just on a financial level, not a physical level. So if a woman were to attain a lot of wealth throughout her lifetime and she becomes, you know, she's old and rich, she would be just as valuable as a man, right? Uh, only to the kinds of losers that women don't like to date, because keep in mind, most women I have known, and you may not be one of them, most women I've known want to be with a man who makes more money than they do, even if they make a million dollars and the guy makes two million dollars. Uh, most women do not want to be with a guy who makes less money than they do. Yeah, but if you're So if you make more money and you're living with that sensitive poet who who is a very good lover, or you're living with that uh, pizza delivery guy who's uh, all buff, or you're living with the pool guy, oh, yeah, you'll be more valuable to him. Right. But, but what kind of guy are you going to have? Well, it's the same thing. It's vice versa. It's still equal for men. But I don't agree with that because most women don't, in the long run, want to be with a guy like that. They date guys like that. <laughs> But they want somebody of more substance. I'm not saying they should or shouldn't be like that or that it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's how it is. Oh, I don't totally agree. I don't. I, how many rich women do you know whose boyfriend is a pizza delivery guy? Oh, I'm not talking about that right now. I'm that's kidding. what I'm talking about right now. How many? Yeah. Um, I don't know any. That's I right. How many women rich women are with the sensitive poet or with the uh, musician, the failed musician? You know, the guy who plays the Viper Room and nobody knows who he is. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's all physical, then it's all relative, you know? But the point is that women are perfectly happy, and men are perfectly happy to be with somebody that have to be all physical if they can get away with it. And women are generally not. Generally. Generally. Well, we can only deal with generalities. Right. If you're lucky enough to score with a woman who only wants to get boned and doesn't care about any commitment, well, I guess you're a lucky guy. But there's not a lot of those out there. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you.
yeah, I just got a $20 a week raise, and so I should be more valuable now to the guys out there. I don't think so. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Nate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. How are you? Okay, son. I just wanted to call because um, I'm currently in that state that you're talking about right now. I'm a 21-year-old college student graduating this May with aspirations of going to law school, and I just wanted to tell you that although we may not see the light at the end of the tunnel, you do paint the light at the end of the tunnel for us. I tell all my friends all the time, one of the things that you quoted that will always stick fresh in my mind is that my current wife is only in 6th or 7th grade right now. That's right. And that's how I live, and that's why I can tolerate all these uh, bimbos that go to my school knowing that by the time they hit 30, no one's going to want them, and that I didn't miss out because I got a new crop of 19- to 20-year-olds coming fresh to me. Because I'm, I'm telling you, Nate, if you want to see your trophy wife, go down to the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood uh-huh. where Hannah Montana, the, the movie, is playing. Uh-huh. She's in line right now waiting for tickets. <laughs> Oh my God. And she's being trained on how to be a little tart uh, by Hannah Montana. To be seen and not heard. Right. And to dress up to please guys. I mean, she's getting all the right education. I want to thank the Walt Disney Company, by the way, for uh, preparing us for another uh, generation of mindless sluts. Uh, we had the... Uh, uh, what was the, the Lizzie McGuire era with, uh, uh, what's her name, Hillary Duff? And now we've got the new version of that, Hannah Montana with Miley Cyrus. And in each case, it's all about accessorizing and buying the clothes that your little hero wears and everything. Oh, most definitely. And, and ultimately being a mindless, like mindless little tart, which is exactly what you want. Well, I don't want them to think because I'm going to be the one doing the thinking anyway. That's what I've gone to school for. That's exactly. For. And I just want to thank you, I mean, because... You know, you are the one showing me that light at the end of the tunnel, and I listen to you every day and try and base my life around so I can set myself in a position to succeed. I mean, I don't want to be a 35-year-old uh, pizza delivery guy, as you uh, are describing. You know, I want to be successful. I want to have reputation. I want to have integrity. I want to have all these things along with my wealth that go along with that. And you have all those, Tom, and that's why I look up to you and aspire to be you, and that's why people call you dad. So. I can't thank you more than enough, and just I'll hopefully be able to call you in five or six, ten years from now. Of course, you'll still be on the air, and I can tell you safely that I did succeed, and I appreciate it. I'm proud of you, son. Thank you so much. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Why would he trust you? Because I hear him what he wants, Tom. I'm good at what I do. If you understand what I mean. I don't want to say it over the radio. Because there's no there's no chrome on your trailer hitch at home. Is that what you're telling us? Um, I think so. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. In case you're just joining us, I um, I gave some of my renewed perspective on why I have a zero tolerance policy towards any crap that women dish out. And uh, it's really simple. Through experience, I have learned that uh, any time a woman goes, there's another one not far behind. One who's much more compliant, or one who will be much less critical, one who will make um, less demands. I don't have to put up with crap. It's the most liberating thing that's ever happened to me is knowing this. Mel on the Tom Like a Show, hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Um, yeah, I think it's a question and a statement at the same time. I don't know how hello could be a question. Uh, hello, are you there? Is anyone there? God, can you hear me? Because I'm I'm the MILF. I'm the one wearing the pants. I may be the female, but I'm you. So what do I do? What do you mean, what do you do? Uh, well, you you get to be Mrs. Robinson. That's what you get. Uh, Mrs. Robinson of, uh, of which movie? I, the movie that's playing now, the, the one that we're um, educating our children to partake in, the one that my children are currently partaking in, Twin Little Celebrities. All I know is that I was you, 
and now that I'm the one that's a little older, that means I'm out. No, no, no. I keep I keep getting more more beautiful like a fine wine. No, no, no. Mean? That's an illusion that women have because uh, you get more beautiful to yourself, and well, other women appreciate I mean, aging beauties. And all the money is taken, and you end up like Danny, and you go, hey, hey, what happened? Then you say, oh gosh, I guess I better start dating twenty one year olds, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you either get the 21 year olds or you get the 60 year olds. Yeah, the 77 year old boss that proposed to me a couple of months ago, I had to say no, but I just couldn't do that. That's what you get. Thing. I just couldn't. That's what you get when you're in your position of having money. Oh, well, you know what? The position of having money, I've realized, is, is just that, a position. What 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 really comes down to now is when you look at yourself in the mirror. And by the way, I, I just got out of the tub to make this call. Okay, that's because I I was so heated after I heard uh, your little explanation or explanatory speech. And the mask that is still on my face is cracking. And I just want you to know that um, you can take you can take the the beauty out of me as I age. You can take the money out of my pockets and and bank accounts. You can exploit me. Um, you can have the paparazzi follow me around and the PIs. Whatever you guys want to do, take it all. Because there's one thing that you didn't get, baby, and that's my soul. And, you know, all these things that you may be teaching these youngsters, like women are disposable, you got to want to hear coming, blah, 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 blah. When you keep that attitude in your back pocket, um, you're going to lose because people are not expendable. You know, you well, actually, replace- actually, everybody's replaceable. All right, all right. But when you wake up in the morning and you go, oh, gosh, maybe I'll drive through in and out again and again and again and again and again, it's not the healthiest move, is it? What does that have to do with what I just said? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's like no. you have to remember one thing. You can play the game, you know, and you can read Neil Strauss's book if you want, you know, or you can, or you can face it all and go, you know what, I'd rather be... Um, you know, shopping at the 99 cent store than Gelson's, and I'm just as, uh, just as happy. I don't understand you know? what you're saying. I really don't. I mean, you're you're being too what esoteric. Is, is what is I'm just you're saying. Training, you're training the new generation, okay, by this attitude like, um, you know, I'm getting better. I'm making more money. If she doesn't make me this, I'll go find one that will. What I'm saying is you don't need any of that at all. What you need is, is to realize that you don't need for much in this life except happiness and a good soul. Yeah, but, uh, but define happiness. Happiness to me is, is laughing, like right. not even being able to stop. Because right. Somebody, you know, happiness is um, watching a child open a Christmas gift or a Hanukkah gift in the morning and seeing their face light up. Well, that's wonderful. Happiness but you don't, have, you, don't have to, you don't have to be married. You don't have to be married to an aging hag uh, to get that experience. Yeah, and you don't. You don't accept the proposal from your seventy-seven-year-old lavender-colored boss. I never suggested I that you should. Because you know, I mean, what are you going to do? I never suggested you know, that you should. Well, you create your own business and you get on with it, and you just realize, shoot, okay, I'm not going to play victim. I'm not going to accept what the courts are saying. I'm not going to mourn or be the boohoo crybaby girl anymore. I'm going to get up and do something about it. And if that means I have to take a job in a different, you know, a different career, if that means I have to go back to whatever it takes, you have to do it. Like whatever it takes right now, I, I'm I'm freezing with goosebumps all over my body and a mask that's cracking because I had to jump out of the tub to make this call. Okay, that's what it takes. Because I, I just want you to know, it's tough when you're the when you're a milf, all right, and you're single. I know it's I tough. Know, the first yes. time in your life, it's tough to be a milf. And then you, oh gosh, should I go for the guys my age? Nah, um, nah. They're usually married, and, or they just want to have an affair with me. Or should I date the youngsters? Well, th- there's not so much to talk about with them, you know. Or do I do the 77 year old lavender man? What do you do? Well, you see, if you were if, go solo if, and just get a whole bunch of cats and become great Aunt Nancy. Well, uh, darling, uh, yeah. First of all, I, I live alone. I have no cats. Uh, no, <laughs> there's no women who have the key to my place. And I mean, none. <laughs> Okay. You probably have a gated entrance and a security. Okay? No, no, I don't. I'm out of the shelter. No, Jesus. I, I don't actually. But I also do not give my keys out. I don't have anyone living in my place. Hey, I don't even have a key. The car that was all the deal too. You know, I was riding the metro. What are you, what are you going to say? You don't have a key. And it all goes. So your doors are unlocked. What time can I come over? <laughs> it's, it, this is not 
not even a door, babe. I'm in a tent right now down at Topanga Beach. Just kidding. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just I didn't think they had showers down there. Yeah, they're a little cold. That's why I'm shivering. Can you hear me? There we go. The bottom line here, darling, is that, uh, it, look, if you've got money, enjoy it. But the fact oh, baby, is... Baby, I had the money. I had millions. Now it's gone. Now I probably have, I don't know... Wait, where did it... Wait, wait, wait. Where did it go? Um, well, you know, it, it it went with a lot of litigation. It went with a lot of bad L- choices. Litigation? Men, okay? Like, we're talking identity theft. It went with um, a lot of not looking at the price tag. and It went with a lot of uh, mistakes and choices that I do place on myself. Huh. However, um, girl naive here, or you might want to call me girl interrupted, um, she just grew up with a normal family and then got thrown into Hollywood and became a producer and raised some kids that now, you know, multi mega mobile whatever you want to call it, is below minus a few years, um, Miley Cyrus's. In fact, one of them dated her. But he said she was a little bit too fast for him. I don't know what that means. But anyway, mm. um, well, I guess I do because most of the men that I ended up with after my 10-year marriage um, were, were fast as well. And they saw sucker written on my head. And they saw single celebrity mom with kids loaded. And, and what happened with that? As soon as they said, sure, honey, I'll help you, guess what happened with that? I believed them because when you've been trudging the Hollywood fame game as for as long as I have, um, you finally get tired. Darling, darling, you know why that is? I'm going to tell why? you why that is. I mean, we don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. Maybe Dean does, but I don't. All well, I'm, I'm going to trying to figure that out. Too. All I'm going to say. All I'm going to say to you, dear. Oh There's no Botox anymore. The boob. Dear. You can only cash that. Dear, in you are yourself. you are what I call in this town a lottery winner. You came a here woman? a lot. No, a lottery winner. Oh, a, lottery a, a lottery winner. You're one of these people who has no background in the entertainment industry. No, no, that's not true. Oh, I'm not sudden, just like one of the first Maybelline models. But that, I'm doesn't not mean, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you. Do that, that doesn't I mean you pay have pay any. Ba- are you? Yeah, I got my is your mother? Uh, is your mother a producer? Diamonds. Is your mother a director? Is your mother? No. Are you a producer or director? No. You were thrust yes, into that role. I wasn't. You were thrust into that company. role. Do you have any education in that? In that? I sure do. You do. You went to a university to study film production. I did. You did. I took college freshmen all over Italy studying the masterpieces. I'm an art therapist by degree. No, no, no. I'm talking about film. You said you're a producer. Yes, sir. My kids. I don't know if you ever saw Big Daddy, but um, Scuba Steve. I'm trying to. I'm not going to lay it on the line. I'm not asking you to lay it on the line. I'm not asking you for anything. We have one minute left, and I have to move this conversation along. All right. Okay. I'll thank you then. Here's your minute. Here's your minute. And you guys can get back to me. I'm you. I'm the woman wearing the pants. But you're saying that, like, you know, by my age, I'm has been if I'm not hooked up. So hook me up. Give me a date with Bonaducci. He's jaded. I'm jaded. Let's see. And maybe you can show Oh, that would be a date from hell. So you're, you're what, you want to do a reality show you. with Danny Bonaducci? You want me to hook that up? Sure. Why not? I mean, I'm, I'm tired of the 21-year-olds. I told you. Oh, my God. I'm I'm in pain. I am in pain. Our... Our email, who is that? I think she was trying to tell us who she is, but our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.